Ghanaian President Nana Akufado has removed his finance minister Ken Ofori Atta, replacing him with Mohamed Ami Adam. The outgoing minister has been spearheading Ghana's negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for loans to support the country's economic reforms. His replacement is part of a major cabinet reshuffle announced on Wednesday by President Akufuado. No government official was available to speak on the cabinet changes. Mustafa Bandi is the Deputy General Secretary of the Opposition National Democratic Congress Party, the NDC. He tells me the reshuffle is an attempt by the president to compensate unemployed members of his party and not to improve the economy. First of all, these are very difficult times for the people of Ghana and for that matter the governance of our country, where clearly the government admits that the finance minister is a failed minister. The finance minister is, you know, said to have been involved in a lot of financial scandals including issues of conflict of interest, using his private companies as receivers of shares in fund arrangements internationally. And this is not, you know, a close secret. Everybody is aware of that. You speak so uh, poorly about the outgoing finance minister, but the president has expressed confidence in the performance of the minister. And uh, as you mentioned, the president reappointed him. So if he were not performing, he would not get the appointment. Well, what is rather sad is that this is the first president and whose administration the whole nation, including his political party, admits that they have failed, yet he thinks that they are performing. The president, Akufado, is clearly out of touch. He is not in sync with the reality on the ground. He doesn't know that Ghanaians are suffering. The reshuffle of the president is targeted at compensating unemployed members of his party and not targeted as having any impact in our economic restoration. Let's put things in perspective and remind our listeners that Ghana goes to elections sometime this year. So what do you say to people who say you're all playing politics, that nothing the president does at the moment will please you? Well, we are speaking to past records, infrastructural transformation for this country, evidence-based transformation, public policies that have impacted in the life of our people. We have been transparent to our people. So we are speaking to those records. Today, you have, on the other hand, a vice president who comes to say, no, we have advised the president as an economic management team, and the president refused to take our advice. Hence, that is why our country is in a mess. Who can develop confidence in this kind of government? For the first time in the history of the world, will a vice president say that the president didn't take my advice, but he retained himself as a vice president for seven years? How can you trust people who are not honest? How can you trust a government that does not take responsibility of a problem that they have created or they have not created? President Akufado and his government will not do that. Simply, they are trying to rebrand the vice president who is a puppet for the president, for the president to be in control for a third term. And that the people of Ghana say they are not ready for. Maybe this question I should put to the government when I get any of the officials. The finance minister was at the helm when the latest loan was uh, of $3 billion was uh, negotiated with the International Monetary Fund. And some people say that loan was beginning to yield some uh, results. So why replace the finance minister? Well, the president should be answering that if people can be proud of taking loans, then that is how hopeless this government can be. I thought that they would be proud that they have alleviated poverty. I thought that they would be talking about jobs they have provided for the ordinary Ghanaian. I would think that they would be proud of having stabilized our energy crisis. I would be thinking that they have succeeded in approaching corruption in our government. And so you shouldn't celebrate somebody who takes loans. Why? An achievement is that you have, you have procured a loan. Is that an achievement? Are we not going to pay? If you are credible, you should have a loan. But if you are efficient, you should depend on your internally generated funds. Nguagwa Zindura is the president of the Center for Political and Strategic Studies in the DRC and a former spokesperson for President Joseph Kabila. He tells viewers Douglas Mpuga that demonstrations alone will not end the fighting in the eastern part of the country. The problem here, again, you know, um, I can't say enough about this, is that this uh, looks like a propaganda ploy is not what is needed. 
What is needed is action on the ground. The government needs to get uh, their acts together and not to expect uh, some magical thing to happen where Rwanda will just bow because uh, there was a demonstration in Kinshasa. They need to be on the battleground, making sure they're giving the means to the soldiers to fight the war against uh, the aggression uh, on our country. The women, and unlike other protests, uh, like the one which was there over the weekend, this one was peaceful and uh, led by government official to the government. What was the purpose exactly? Exactly. This is where the problem is, you know, is that uh, now... Uh, Everybody is trying to find a way to blame somebody for the war. And, uh, you know, people are trying to get themselves seen during the war. But this is not really the problem here. See, you know, this was led by the Minister of Gender, Children and Family. And and, uh, she's talking about supporting the action of the government. No, that's not what we need. We don't need uh, uh, people talking so much about the war. What we need is for the government to make sure that soldiers are adequately paid as this happens, uh, the uh, situation in eastern Yara Congo is a bit tense. And uh, what's the government doing about it, apart from having the demonstrations in Kinshasa? Yeah, they exactly. This is where exactly where the problem is. Where they are supposed to be concentrating their efforts is to make sure that our soldiers uh, have the capacity to fight. But this is not what is going on. I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk. Uh, there's a lot of issues and citing the population to say this to lay blame on the international community. The international community is not going to fight the war for Congolese people. Uh, Right now, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. Ukrainians are fighting the war. There's no international community there trying to go fight Russia. Absolutely not. You know, that's what the government should be doing. Mulengwa Zihindura is the president of the Center for Political and Strategic Studies in the DRC and a former spokesperson for President Joseph Kabila. He spoke from... Kansas City with uh, viewers Douglas Mpuga. The U.S. State Department times its relations with the Southern African nation as strong. However, U.S. Congressman John James and Jared would like the ties to come under review. They introduced a bill in the U.S. House of Representatives on February 6th that seeks to undergo a review of the bilateral ties between the United States and South Africa. Rep. John James accuses Pretoria of building ties to countries and actors that undermine the U.S.'s national security and threaten the U.S. way of life through its military and political cooperation with China and Russia and its support of U.S. designated terrorism organization Hamas. It calls South Africa's IC case against Israel a political motivated one and claims it is wrongfully accusing Israel. Speaking to your South African newspaper Mail and Guardian, the country's top diplomat Naledi Pandol said she believes South Africa offers quality products to the US market and I wish that relationship to grow. We have different views. On many foreign policy matters but as a democracy we affirm the sovereign right of states to frame their foreign policy i'm concerned at the bill drafters attempt to associate our country with terrorism and the atrocious attack against civilians in israel Vicente Maguena, spokesman for President Cyril Ramaphosa, told Bloomberg on Monday, February 12th, that a lot of uh, the issues raised by the members of Congress are issues that have either been dealt with through our own judicial processes or clarified in public communication. Following the IC ruling on our application, the argument that our case was wrongfully or politically motivated can no longer be sustained, Mawenya added. The bill still has to be discussed and passed. Last June, A bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers asked the Biden administration in a letter to punish South Africa by relocating the 20th African Growth and Opportunity Act, a Goa forum set to place in Johannesburg in November 2023 to another country. 
the lawmakers claimed South Africa supported Russia's invasion and called into question its eligibility to receive trade benefits from the U.S. under a law that improved U.S. market access to qualify sub-Saharan African countries. At the time, South African Foreign Ministry spokesman Clayson Monyela said in a statement that the letter, and, uh, the letter had been noted, but South Africa still enjoys the support of the U.S. government for its hosting of the African Growth and Opportunity Act meeting.